What do we have here? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna kill me, Mr. J? What? Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you. Really, really bad. I know it seems long overdue, but I'm finally going to do a review of the Suicide Squad movie. Just share my thoughts on it. And uh, I may address two other movies as well. In fact, I'm pretty sure I will because they both relate to the Suicide Squad. But uh, of course, this will be spoiler filled. That's another one. One reason that I waited to do this review is to make sure that people had a chance to see the movie if they were interested in seeing it. And there's another reason that I kind of waited to do this review, which I will get into it as I share my thoughts. I'm going to go ahead and jump right in, sharing my opinions, and I want to start off with what I feel were the strengths of the movie. Now, first of all, I do feel that they did a pretty decent job of making sure that this movie felt like it was connected to the previous movies, Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman. So, of course, Batman did make an appearance didn't have a lot of screen time, but what he had I thought was significant enough. Superman, of course, it didn't actually show him because of, you know, spoiler alert. Like I said, going to be plenty of spoilers within this video. But, of course, he died at the end of Batman versus Superman. So, they still acknowledged his existence. They acknowledged his death. I think one of the, one of the best moments in the movie early on was when Amanda Waller, was going in for a meeting she passed that guy selling the t-shirts in honor of Superman and she had this little just this little devious smile on her face and I really liked that moment because it really set her character up well and you just knew that she's going to use Superman's existence you know to basically manipulate the government so that was a little subtle moment that I thought was pretty pretty clever actually moving on to the next strength of the movie who I feel was by far the best character in the movie, Deadshot, of course, played by Will Smith. Now, when Will Smith was first cast in this role, I was a little concerned. Um, and for anybody that was concerned just because they changed the character's race, I mean, just get with it. <laughs> you know, we know that a lot of these characters were created back in a time when... Um, there were a lot of racial issues. Of course, there are still a lot of racial issues in the country, but minorities were very much not well represented in comics. So the fact that some comic book characters' ethnicity has been changed, I don't think it's a big deal. If it's not tied to the character's background, like, for example, you know, the Black Panther, he's an African king. So, of course, he would need to stay as an African king, played by an African-American or an actual person from one of the countries in Africa. But, um... But yeah, if it's not tied to the character's background, then I don't think it's a big deal to change the ethnicity. No, the main reason I was worried about Will Smith is because Will Smith is just such a huge star. I was really wondering if he's going to be able to basically play his role within a team dynamic, you know, or would he basically just kind of take over the movie? And also, I was wondering if he would be just too much like Will Smith, like we've seen him in previous movies. And... I'll admit, I was really wrong with, you know, some of my assumptions about Will Smith being in this movie. His charm, I mean, and he was very reminiscent of the way that he has been in, in, previous, mov in previous movies, but this movie really needed that charm that he has. And I think he really reminded us of why he is such a big star. I think by far it's his best role in years. Um, now, I'll, I'll be fair, though, I haven't seen Concussion. I didn't actually watch that movie yet I've been meaning to watch it I still want to get to it it looks like he did a great job in it but um other than that movie uh you know some of the other stuff that he's done in recent years not the greatest so yeah he really shined in this movie and I think one of the best scenes in Suicide Squad is the scene where he and Batman he has an encounter with Batman and um his daughter you know steps in the middle and uh really tries to encourage him to do the right thing to put his weapon down and I think it also showed just how intelligent Batman is. The fact that Batman didn't try to interfere. He just let that play out between the daughter and the father. Um, 
it was just a beautiful moment. Tragic, yet yeah, beautiful at the same time. Definitely one of the best scenes in the movie. And like I said, Will Smith shines so much in this movie that I actually think the movie could have used even more, more of him. You know, it's funny. At first, I was like, I, I hope that he doesn't take the movie over. But with the way this movie ended up playing out, I mean, I, I thought it actually could have used even more scenes with him. You know, especially maybe digging into his background a little bit more. So definitely he was a strength of the movie. The next strength of the movie and a really nice surprise was Diablo. When they first uh, showed the whole team together, that, that really, uh, you know, popular picture where it showed the whole team, all the cast members. And Diablo was off to, uh, I believe, like the right side and... um. I just, I wasn't familiar with the character like at all. I don't think I'd ever seen him in a comic before. And uh, unless he was like some character like in the background, but I definitely hadn't heard him speak within, you know, seen him speak in a comic or anything. So, uh, yeah, I thought he was just going to be a throwaway character. And again, I, I'll admit I was wrong about that. Surprisingly, he brought a lot of heart to the movie and he actually had an arc, you know, um, Something else that really stands out about the character is the fact that they showed that he had hurt innocent people in the past. You know, he actually killed his own family unintentionally, but it's just because he didn't have a great handle on his powers. And by the way, his powers is, you know, it really showed, they really showed just how powerful he was in the end, a lot more than I expected. And it really made sense to have him on the team considering the threat that they were up against. So uh, going back to what I was saying though, um, just the fact that he had hurt innocent people, I think that was very important in this movie. They kept marketing this movie as these are the bad guys and you know they're going up against some other bad guys. So it's almost like um, I guess bad versus evil, <laughs> you know, is what they were kind of marketing it as. But, and I'm, I'm sort of getting into a negative here, but I kind of have to when I'm addressing this character. He stood out to me because they showed that he had actually hurt innocent people and yet he still had an arc and you could still feel for his character in the end. They didn't really do that with the other characters. Even Deadshot, even though I really like Deadshot in this movie, the guy that he assassinated, you almost got this feeling like he was a criminal. It didn't say that directly. You know, he was a witness, but you feel like he was kind of turning against the um, people that he worked with. So the fact that they I just felt like they didn't really make these bad guys feel like bad guys. They were almost too sympathetic, too comical. And uh, yeah, so they just didn't really sell the movie the way that they should have. Or it's really I, let me change that around. OK, they sold the movie the way they should have, but then they should have lived up to it. That's what I need to say. They really should have lived up to that. But like I said, they did the right thing by Diablo. He hurt innocence, but he still had an arc. You could still feel for the character. And it, it made sense why he was on the team. And that actor, uh, I've actually seen that actor in several different movies, but I just kept forgetting what does he really look like? You know, but um, he's actually in one of my favorite horror movies, which was a remake. He was in Quarantine, which was a remake of the Spanish movie Rec or Record. So, um, yeah, he's a good actor, and he really did his thing in this movie. Definitely one of the strengths. So I've been talking about positives up to this point, but honestly right now I'm kind of hitting a middle-of-the-road point here. Some positives, some negatives. Focusing on Harley Quinn and Joker, and th this is a big part of the reason why I hesitated on doing this review. is just because I'm such a big fan of Harley Quinn, such a big fan of Joker, and this movie, Suicide Squad, was actually my most anticipated movie of this year. More so than anything else. More so than Batman vs. Superman. More so than Captain America Civil War. It's my number one anticipated movie. And I was really hoping for Harley Quinn and Joker to shine in this movie. I think the casting was on point. Margot Robbie, definitely, you know, I can't think of another actress right now that could play Harley Quinn as well. I mean, if you go back some years then I think there might have been more competition because, um, you know, Brittany Murphy, who definitely died before her time, um, she would have been a good contender, you know, years back. Uh, but right now, you know, with the actresses in Hollywood, Margot Robbie, perfect casting. 
Jared Leto, I know people have different opinions on him playing the Joker, but again, I think really good casting. But here's my issue with both of them. For one thing, with Harley Quinn, they didn't give enough background to her. They didn't really explain how she's able to do the things that she can do, why she fights so well, why she's so acrobatic. I mean, if you know the background on the character, you know that not only was she very intelligent and succeeded well in college and everything, she was also an athlete in college. So that's where her skills come from, and it wouldn't have taken much to kind of fit that in there. And then, of course, part of it is her just not caring, you know, just being willing to throw herself into a fight. That does help her as well, but she actually does have legitimate skills. And uh, there wasn't enough buildup to their relationship, which that really irks me because when you look back at the original teaser, not the first trailer, but the actual teaser that came from Comic-Con, you really assumed that they were going to show how the Joker sort of broke her down and tortured her and really wore her down and then it was almost like that Stockholm Syndrome type of thing where she grew to love him through abuse basically and uh, I think they just steered clear of that I don't know if it was for the sake of time or if they were afraid to touch upon that in fact there was a scene that was shown being filmed in which the Joker actually hit her he slapped her and um uh, I think that would have been important to include and I know some people right away are wondering why in the world would that be important but this is what's important you know, relating to Harley's character. There's an arc to her in the comics like there was an arc to her with the, even the animated series. I mean he was abusive towards her in the animated series. series it still kind of shocks me that they actually showed the Joker hitting her in the animated series. But again, it's important because you see a, a woman that was basically abused, learning to move beyond and, and break that attachment away from this man and standing on her own too and being strong on her own too. That is something that people could learn from, you know, especially women in that situation could really learn from that. And that, I feel like that arc was just taken away from her, you know, and um, essentially in this movie, even though she's a, a strong character still, she almost became like a damsel in distress and the Joker just playing the hero. And it's not really true to either one of their characters. You know, Harley Quinn, I think, could have found her own way out if she wanted to get out. Just like, um, and, and with the Joker, I mean, uh, the Joker, I can imagine him hiring people to go rescue Harley, but I don't think he would go rescue Harley himself unless there was something else in it for him because he's selfish I mean when it comes down to it he is a selfish character he's not just a hero for Harley so I hate that they played him that way in the movie and the the ending oh my god the rescue at the end I, I feel like it may have been tacked on just because they do want to do a Harley Quinn solo movie it felt very tacked on to me you have the Joker coming in rescuing her and with that corny outfit on the SWAT outfit that says Joker on it that was just it, I really rolled my eyes when that happened it's just so not the, like the Joker to do that and there was a toy that was created by a company um I want to say hot toys I can't remember 100% for sure but they had created this toy of the Joker in a Batman suit and it had the Joker colors and everything on it I felt like if the Joker was going to come in and rescue Harley herself, I thought it would have been funny if he came in in a costume like that. Like, if you maybe see, like, this Batman-looking figure in the shadows, maybe taking out some guards, and then he comes in, you know, the explosion happens, he comes in, and you see that it's actually the Joker in a Batman costume. To me, that would have been a lot more clever, a lot more fun way to wrap up the movie. But as is, I just felt like it wasn't true to either character, even though the casting was on point. And I know Jared Leto is upset about how much his character, how much the Joker was cut down in this movie. And it is ridiculous how little the Joker is in the movie. And the reason that they were able to cut him down so much is because they did not make him integral to the plot. And even even Harley and, you know, or Dr. Harleen or Harley Quinn... She wasn't really integral either. If you really think about it, you got to wonder, like, why was she even on this team for this particular mission, considering what they were up against? Like I said, Diablo, with his powers, you can understand why they would put him up against the Enchantress. But some of the other team members, 
I think no, it just doesn't make sense why you would send these particular people after someone so powerful. It just didn't make sense. I think Deadshot, you you saw what Deadshot was able to do because he had the best action moment in the movie when he took out all of those. Uh, I don't even know what they were calling. I mean, basically it was cannon fodder. But when he took them out and he showed just how much of a marksman he was, you can understand why he was sent. But you know, Harley Quinn, it she she didn't really make sense on the team for this particular mission. I feel like the threat should have been scaled down. It really should have been scaled down. So it would have made more sense to have this particular team on the mission. And I think the Joker and Doc, you know, Harley Quinn, I keep looking at this one. I'm sorry about that. Keeps drawing my eyes. But Harley Quinn, I really feel like they should have been more integral to this plot and they just weren't. And that's a shame. And then, like I said, leaving out that abusive relationship aspect it makes me wonder now, where is her art going to be in a solo movie? Because I'm going to be very upset if they do a solo movie and there's no real arc to the character. If they don't show her being abused by the Joker or being mistreated by the Joker and then learning to break away from him, then I'm going to be highly disappointed by that. They need to do that. I mean, there's still the potential to do that in her solo movie, but, you know, we'll see. And I really do hope that Jared Leto gets to shine more as the Joker in the future because his scenes were so brief. It's almost hard to tell what he was going for with the character. There was one scene that I did. I, I was getting into it. And uh, I, I do like how they showed that it felt like he was connected to the criminal world. Like he actually played a role in the criminal world. Sometimes a problem with the Joker is that He's so violent and he's so like he, he takes out so many different other villains or goes at so many other villains. You really wonder why hasn't the whole criminal world just turned against him and took him out. But in this movie, you, you felt like there were other criminals that respected him and he had connections. And that's how he was able to do some of the things that he did, like to, to get the phone to Harley Quinn through the guard. But that scene when he um when he was uh, approaching the guard and, you know, he kind of jumped in his lap and everything, it was getting intense. And then all of a sudden it was over. And it, that was such a letdown. And even that moment they kept showing in the trailer where he's just all in the guard's face, like, you know, I can't wait to show you my toys. That wasn't even in the movie. It, it was just, it was unusual. And uh, while I still have these figures up here, let me go ahead and talk about another downside to this, mo this movie, the editing. The editing just didn't work for me. They said that, and I believe it, the same company that put together the trailers was hired to do a cut of the movie. And so then the final cut of the movie that we actually saw, it was mostly their edits. And I can believe that because a lot of this movie felt like it was edited like a trailer. In fact, there are sections, there are scenes that were in the trailer that are exactly the same in the movie. And that was just really weird to me. It's usually usually scenes that you see in a trailer, they breathe more in the actual movie. And it wasn't that way in Suicide Squad. Like I said, a lot of those scenes that you saw in the trailer were exactly the same in the movie. It was very awkward. And then also, I think that there were some moments in the trailer that were left in the movie that probably shouldn't have been. Let me give you one good example. There's that scene at the end, I think they used it at the end of two different trailers where Harley Quinn breaks the glass in the front of that shop and she takes a purse and you know, she's like, we're bad guys, that's what we do. That was a good trailer moment. It didn't need to be in the movie. And this is very nitpicky, but you all think about it. Where did that purse go to? Really think about that. Where did the purse go to? It's not as if she had on much clothing. It's not like she tucked it away anywhere and um i'm not gonna get into that but i'll just say this she didn't have anywhere to put that purse away so where did the purse go it was there just for that one little joke that one little moment and then it disappeared so it was pointless to even waste time with that like i said good trailer moment didn't need to be in the movie and i wouldn't be surprised if that was one of the reshoots that they did also the fight that she had in the elevator that was probably a reshoot scene as well because it's like she was trying to get away from the team. She took out the people in the elevator and then she's right back with the team. It was just weird. Same thing happened with another character, which I'll get to. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and move on to some of the other characters in the movie. Boomerang. 
There is a point in the bar scene where Boomerang took off as if he was just going to leave. Once Rick Flag had pretty much given up and he thought that things were just going to play out the way they would play out and that, you know, the team had basically lost, Boomerang took off. And then there's this hero shot where they're all walking down the street towards where the Enchantress is and all of a sudden Boomerang just comes back. That was weird. <laughs> I mean, again... It's like a moment, it felt like a trailer moment that was kind of put into the actual movie. It, it was just really weirdly done. As far as these other characters are concerned, Killer Croc, I feel like he was a waste in the movie. Not not interesting at all to me. And, uh, I, you know, the director originally, he wanted King Shark to be in the movie. King Shark has been used on the Flash series. I kind of wonder if that's why they ended up not using King Shark, because I don't buy that they couldn't figure out a way to make him work on the screen. And there's another movie I'm going to address here, Assault on Arkham. This is by far a better Suicide Squad movie, and I'll talk about this movie some more in a couple minutes here, but this movie actually has a version of King Shark within it. There is a version of King Shark that is really much more like a shark than a man, but then there's another version of King Shark, and they did use it in Assault on Arkham, this movie, in which... King Shark is more like a human. He looks more human. He's very large, and he does have these uh, metal teeth that he puts into his mouth. So, I mean, they could have done that, like that version of the character in this movie. So, I really don't buy that they cut King Shark out because they couldn't do like CGI with him. I just felt like maybe it was because they'd used him on the Flash and they did such a good job with him on the Flash. Maybe that's why they didn't use him. And by the way. The fact that they took some of the characters or, or even killed off some of the characters from the CW series because they wanted to use them in the movies, I really don't like that. You know, they got rid of Amanda Waller, uh, Captain Boomerang was on um, Arrow. Um, there were some other characters as well. They took them away from the TV series for the sake of the movies, and now it seems like that doesn't matter anyway because now they're, gonna, they're, they're bringing in Superman to the Supergirl series to try to help that series out. It, it just felt like they shouldn't have done that. You know, I think the characters can exist in television and within movies. And I think Katana on Arrow was w much more interesting than she was in this movie. And to me, in the movie, she didn't have one cool moment at all. I didn't like anything that she really did in this movie. They had that really cool scene in the trailer of her capturing the souls in the sword. It wasn't even in the movie, though. Um... I mean, it was used in the trailers, but it wasn't actually in the movie. That really annoyed me. And also, the fact that her husband's soul is trapped in that sword, and she knows how tortured he is by that, it really made me wonder, why, why does she keep seeming so eager to kill other people with the sword and dooming them to that same fate? I think that made her character kind of questionable. I can understand her using the sword as a weapon when it's really needed, but I felt almost like, Maybe she should have had that sword and then another weapon as well, like another sword that she uses for, you know, maybe people that maybe deserve to die, but don't exactly deserve that, you know, to be doomed inside of the sword. Because, like I said, just the fact that her husband is trapped in there, it made it very questionable that she just kept wanting to strike down other people with that same sword. Rick Flagg, you know, when, he, when I first heard about the movie and, uh, you know, I learned a little bit about Rick Flagg, although I have seen that character. I know that he's been used in um, at least one or two of the animated DC movies. And uh, I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen I'm not sure if I've seen him in the comics or not, but I had a feeling that his character wasn't going to be very interesting. As a matter of fact, I thought for sure that he would get killed off in the end. So I was wrong about him getting killed off, but I was right about him not being very interesting. I just, I, the character did nothing for me. That's nothing against the actor. But the way the character was written, he just really did nothing for me. You know, and, and like I said, that's pretty much true for all of these characters. Captain Boomerang, he kind of has some charm to him, but he just wasn't very cool. I mean, where were the cool bo Boomerang moments at? You know, at least at least the animated um, Captain Boomerang has had some cool moments using his weapons. This version of Boomerang, I mean, there was nothing cool that he did that stood out to me. Uh... Towards the end, I guess one thing that was almost kind of cool is that he had a boomerang like with the camera on it or whatever. That was kind of alright, but still nothing too special though. And one other character that I don't have a pop for, 
because they didn't even bother to make a pop of him is Slipknot. You talk about a waste of a character. Now, I understand that they needed to kill one character to show that Amanda Waller was, was serious and that the bombs that they had implanted in them, that they were the real deal. You know, they did the same thing in the animated movie as well. So I'm not surprised that they did that. But Adam Beach as Slipknot, it's like they could have at least had him at the same prison where the rest of them were and then have him, you know, go out just like the rest of them. But the fact that he showed up right before they were about to go on a mission, it shows just how little they cared about the character and how much of a throwaway character he was. You know what? I mean, just really such a waste. Even though I had a feeling he was he would probably be the one that they would use for that purpose. Still, they could have made it a little more questionable as to which one might die. And for this being a Suicide Squad movie, you know, I actually think there could have been more characters that died. I think they could have raised the stakes even more. Now, let me go ahead and get to the main villain, the main antagonist in this movie, and probably one of the weakest elements of the movie, Enchantress. Her first scene was pretty cool. You know, the uh, the transformation that she had into the Enchantress. And, um... Yeah, the, just the way she looked originally, like that sort of smoky, golem-looking look that she had going on. That worked for me. That was cool. But, uh, man, towards the end, this character just got horrible. Her brother, the way they, they brought her brother in was horrible as well. I hate the fact that she, and she just chose some random guy in a restroom to, you know, to, to her brother to possess. And that was just really weird to me i thought it was going to be somebody more significant you know some people thought that character was going to be played by common and that would have been a lot better than that um that really quick cameo that common had but yeah i mean i just did not like this villain at all especially that second form that she took on where it looks like she's belly dancing all the time with that horrible cgi around her i just didn't like it at all they really should have had a different villain and Enchantress, the, the only way I think I'm familiar with her is through Justice League Dark. I did read the first uh, collected volume of this series because I did like, I really do like some of the characters on this team like Dead Man, John Constantine, or Constantine, however it's supposed to be pronounced. And some of the other characters are cool as well. But Enchantress to me as a character, she just seems like an annoyance. <laughs> like... She's one of those villains that's just like a nuisance more than anything else because she can't really control her powers. Yeah, so she she's just a, a, a nuisance. So why they chose her as the main villain, it doesn't make sense to me, especially considering the team members. Like I said, you know, I felt like these team that like there should have been a smaller threat. And then, of course, I thought it would have been cool if it turned out that the Joker was really the main villain, you know, in some way, if he had something going on behind the scenes that came to light. But no, it ended up being Enchantress. And like I said, she just, she wasn't interesting. I just didn't care for her at all. And her relationship with Rick Flagg, it just, it did nothing for me, really. I thought there was going to be a lot more to that relationship, but it just fell very flat. So, I think you can tell for me with the Suicide Squad movie, I felt like there were more negatives than positives. But I, I actually still want to see the movie again. I'm looking forward to watching it again and um just kind of analyzing it some more and I, I don't know if they're going to do a director's cut or not if they're going to do an extended cut if they do it i'd definitely be interested to see it but i will say this if they do that i hope this doesn't become a trend wb um you know warner brothers and dc they got to get it right the first time you know they got to get it right with the th theatrical cut the theatrical cut should be able to be the exact same as the home version. You know, they got to get it right on the first time. I hope it doesn't become a trend. I'm not saying there's going to be a director's cut of the Suicide Squad, but, you know, we'll see. Time will tell with that. Now, I am going to go ahead and give an endorsement to this movie. Um, and it's called Batman Assault on Arkham, even though it says Batman. I mean, Batman is in it a lot more than he was in the Suicide Squad movie. But this is very much a Suicide Squad story and i think it's done a lot better than the movie was i'm not saying it's perfect it, it does have some flaws as well in fact the way they introduced the characters is really not much better than they did in the movie 
I know it's difficult to kind of bring in all these different characters, but you know, you think about it this way, and I hate to compare DC and Marvel because I know they're going to do things different from each other, but has Marvel in any of their movies ever done a montage to introduce characters? No, they, they do it much more interesting than that, so... You know, DC has got to find some better way to introduce their characters. The montage thing doesn't really cut it. But again, this movie, um, it is a lot more entertaining. I think it has a better team, better dynamics. I like the way that other villains are introduced. Even um, the Joker integrated much better into the story. A better use of Harley Quinn. So, yeah, if you want a good Suicide Squad movie, you might want to check out Assault on Arkham if you haven't seen it before. And I'm sure by now you probably could find this at a reduced price. And um, I do want to talk about one more movie quickly. They And this is, the, of course, the graphic novel Batman The Killing Joke. They recently did the um, animated version of this movie. And a big shout out to Eric from Sym Symbiotically Geeky. He actually shared the download code with me because he bought the movie and you know that you get the uh, download code to watch it you know through streaming so he actually shared that code with me and I really do appreciate that you know so big shout out to Eric of Symbiotically Geeky but the animated movie they decided to sh lengthen the time of it so they added on this uh, basically a Batgirl story at the beginning and tonally it is so different from the killing joke not only is it different, it's just not well done. They have a very uninteresting villain. The dialogue is weak. Um, some people were kind of upset, and this is a slight spoiler, but not really if you really know your comic history and even your animated DC history. They, they really take it there as far as showing the relationship between Batman and Batgirl. Some people weren't crazy about that, but it's really nothing new, though. So that didn't bother me so much, even though it was kind of like, well, you know, if if this is a, I mean, it's a rated R animated movie. If you're going to take it there, then take it there. I mean, it was kind of weird how they started to show it, then they cut away. And it's like, okay, that was just, it just felt unusual. It didn't flow well. But um, when the actual killing joke begins in the animated movie, that made it all worth it. So if you watch the animated movie, I mean... You know, check out the Batgirl stuff, but uh, really, you watch it for what actually is the killing joke because it's so well done and immediately you're like, okay, now it's happening, now this is really good. So, the movie's worth watching for the actual killing joke material. Like I said, you just kind of have to suffer through the Batgirl material there. And I almost wish that they didn't worry about the length of it. It would have been better if they had maybe a separate Batgirl prelude that you could watch. And then they had the actual Killing Joke by itself. Because, like I said, the Killing Joke is really good. One of the best Batman and Joker stories ever. And I think they actually did a great job with it in animation. So, um, yeah, I know this is a long video. I had a lot of thoughts to share, though. You all let me know your thoughts about the Suicide Squad movie. If you've seen these other movies, you can share your thoughts about those as well. Me, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to give up on the DC movie universe. I think they still can turn things around. You know, I, I said that with you know maybe they could turn things around with the Suicide Squad. But let's be honest, it was a rushed production. I think the director had like six weeks to write the script, which if you know anything about Hollywood, that's like no time at all. So, uh, you know, the Wonder Woman trailer looks good. The Justice League trailer looks good. So, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, they could pull it together, but. You know, in the meantime, if you are not caught up on DC animated movies, most of them are really good. There are a couple, there are a couple of stinkers. I'll be real about it. There are a couple that I don't like, um, like Justice League. I think it's Justice League War, where they kind of rebooted the animated series. I did not like that one. And there's maybe one or two other ones that aren't so hot. But for the most part, the DC animated movies are on point, so... You might want to give those a try while you're waiting for more live action from DC. But again, I want to hear your thoughts. Thank you if you stuck with me all the way through sharing my thoughts about these movies. And you all take care. Until next time.